I've often thought it would be funny to pull up to a gig, watch all the other musicians get their stuff out. So the drummer is setting his drums up, the bass player has his rig set up, the other guitar player is setting his amp up and his pedal board and everything. And I pull this out of a bag, set it next to his amp. So he's got his cabinet, it's got a mic in front of it. I set this down next to it. I put a mic in front of it and I just act like that's my normal rig. I thought that would be funny. And then I thought, but what if I actually took this amp and modified it so I could actually use it in that way. Hmm. So that struck me as something pretty fun and entertaining to do. So here's what we did. Uh, basically, I did modify the circuit inside of this. I added a speaker output jack so I can disconnect these speakers and then run it into a device that allows me to load impulse responses, getting a much better sound, right, than just running through the console. And then I can also add an effects loop to it. So this effects loop does several things, obviously. One, I can use like delay pedals or, you know, pedals that need to be after gain, or I could just bypass the preamp completely, use a completely different pedal or some sort of preamp to get a, a little bit different sound, better sound maybe, and then still use this amp on stage next to everybody else's stuff. Let's try that. All right, let's check out what this little mini amp sounds like. Right now, this tone control actually is more of a mid scoop. So that's all the way scooped. That's full on mids. So let's scoop it out a little bit. I think we need to mess with the gain a little bit. So that drive down quite a bit. I'm gonna turn the tone back to noon or so. Full gain. So some thoughts about this little bitty amp. While it is really cool, it's a very fun thing to play through, especially like if you just need something small to travel with, or even just practicing around the house. It's a fun thing to play with, but it is super limited. It's also super, super affordable as well. So you're not gonna get a full tube amp for 40 bucks or whatever it is. But there are some cool things we can do to actually change the circuit entirely in many different ways. Really limited, but one by how much space we have, how much effort we wanna put into it, and uh, really our options. So for example, we could change this preamp section completely. So basically what you have, it's a non-inverting op amp that just has some clipping diodes to ground after it. And then the tone control, it's really just a mid, a mid control, passive mid control. So as you turn that mid control up, it scoops out the mids, and whenever you turn it down, it just doesn't scoop the mids anymore. It sounds more mid-rangey, because we're playing through little bitty tiny speakers right there, and it's a little bitty amp, so it's gonna sound pretty small and mid-rangey and boxy, so to speak. But after this tone control, mid control, we go into the volume, typical volume, then we go into this power amp section. So something I want to do for this particular amp I'm gonna put an effects loop on it. I wanna be able to bypass this preamp completely. I can run any other preamp into it. I can run any other pedal to it acting like a preamp, like our Black 65 pedal, for example. Then I can just use the power amp section. I think I'm gonna make a speaker output jack so I can run this to a 412 cabinet if I want, or 212 or 112 or whatever, or even use my own IR. So what I'll use it for is probably something like running it through my two notes captor and then use the IRs that I already have set up in it. And that way it's just kind of a fun little way to record or practice or get ideas out or whatever. And uh, you know, it's also fun to show up to a gig having a little bit of amp that's this big. But by using this jack as a speaker output jack, of course, we're not gonna have the headphone option anymore. 
I personally don't really need the headphone option. I mean, I'd rather run it through my doll, use my own impulse responses, and get a much, much better sound than like a little bit of low pass filtering that you're gonna get from the headphone output. Let's, uh, let's get our hands dirty. Okay, so we're getting ready to play through this thing, but I wanted to mention a few things I had problems with. Now, this is more of a budget type of electronics item, right? So I didn't have a whole lot of expectations going into this. I was surprised that the circuit board seemed to be pretty decent. Usually with electronics in this price range, the circuit board can just easily, as you're soldering, the traces can pull up and can be some kind of nasty things that happen if you're not really careful. But this circuit board was great for the price range. The jacks, I have to say, kind of crap. Both the jacks were pretty flaky. If I was gonna play out with this thing, I'd replace both the input jacks and the speaker or headphone jack. I usually has a speaker jack now. But I would replace that jack because it, even now this is flaking out on me a little bit. And then, um, you know, the back of the amp, when I put the, when I made my effects loop, then uh, my, my jacks weren't, the shaft wasn't long enough. I had to find some different jacks with a longer shaft to allow me to go through the back of that uh, cabinet, a little thin piece of plywood on the back of that cabinet. So that was a minor issue, but not a big deal. Overall, it was fun. Uh, if you have some time on your hands, it's a fun little project. So with that said, let's dig into it. I'm going to play through a 412 cabinet first, then we'll go to the 212, then we'll go to the 112, and then we'll do something cool with it. Some cleaner tones. <laughs> Turn this gain up to about noon. Drive is all the way up. All right, so right now I am running into this Black 65 and I'm going into the effects return on this little mini amp. Now this is literally bypassing the preamp completely, just going straight into the power amp of this little mini amp. I have, as you can see, the volume's down quite a bit because if I push it too much, it'll get pretty gainy and I'm trying to keep it clean. But 
But what happens if we put a bell in there? A bell being one of our overdrives, so completely different pedal than the Black 65. More of a, you know, standard overdrive type pedal. Let's try it. And of course, we have to use this amp like a regular amp, right? We have the effects loop, so we need to run something like a delay inside of that effects loop just for fun. These type of DIY projects are so much fun. And if you like this type of stuff as well, make sure to check out my other website, guitarpedalcourse.com. You'll see the DIY course there among a few others. Just fill out the form there and I will provide a series of lessons that really teach you everything you would need to know to do this type of stuff and even more, even designing your own things as well. So we're going pretty deep in this course. But anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time with a new video.